the pandemic has been here for more than two years already. And we're still waiting na itong panahon na ito ay magbago and the pandemic will become endemic. And when we talk about yung pagiging endemic ng pandemic, ibig sabihin po noon, yun pong COVID-19 ay ituturing na natin na simple flu na sobrang manageable na siya. And we're very much at least grateful to, Lord, to the Lord dahil uh, medyo tumaas ng konti ang cases ng COVID sa Metro Manila. But then again, at least according to the experts, this should not be a cause uh, for concern sa atin po. So let's continue to pray uh, about it. And you know, sa atin po ngayon habang naglalakbay tayo sa ganitong klase ng kapanahunan, sa, not only here in the Philippines, buong mundo po, tayo po lahat ay apektado. There are three things aspeto ng ating buhay na kailangan po natin magkaroon ng introspection at the time of this pandemic. And I will be giving three uh, things that we all have to be making an introspection of. And I'll just be giving a trigger warning for the first one because this might uh, at least ano po, yung sensitivity ng mga tao. This might touch on the sensitivity of other people. The first one that we should be thinking of and which we should be very careful about is our state of mind, yung atin pong mental health. And you know, um, at least in a study conducted by the Department of Health, na University Research, uh, kasama po at katulong ang United States of America, um, international development, ang sabi po sa study nila, the pandemic has actually contributed sa mga mental health needs ng mga tao, both met and unmet. And at least in the course of the pandemic, according to the Department of Health, there has been a big number, 3.6 million Filipinos na nagkaroon po ng struggle in terms of their mental health. Kasama na po dito yun pong mga who were able to go through yun pong nagkaroon sila ng COVID-19 and itong mental health struggle ng mga tao, kasama po dito yung tinatawag nating depression and also yung substance disorder such as alcohol disorder, alcohol use disorder, mood disorder, and bipolar disorder. Somehow, napakalaki po ng epekto sa ating mental health ng pandemia. I believe you still remember yung kauna-unahang pagkakataon na nagka-lockdown tayo na ang sakit-sakit sa ulo dahil hindi tayo pare-parehong makalabas. Yung gigising ka sa bahay mo, pagkatapos alam mong dapat lalabas ka, pero hindi ka pwedeng lumabas. There definitely has been a switch of mind, a switch of doing things noong mga panahon na yon. And at least according to this research by the University Research of the Department of Health, ang sabi po nila, one out of three na COVID-19 patients actually struggled with mental health issues. I know that some of you and some of your loved ones who have been through this went through this struggle just the same. And we just don't know kung papaano o kung ano ang ginawa ng ating mga kababayan, ng ating mga kapatid, so they can power through itong sa kanilang mga pinagdadaanan. And with that pandemic also, yung mental health struggle natin was exacerbated and it was made worse by the lockdowns that we do not like anyway. Na nahirapan tayo pare-pareho. Hindi lang po yung ating state of mind, yung ating dapat na iniingatan sa mga panahon na ito. Subalit yung pangalawa, yung ating puso. The state of our heart. And when we talk about the state of our heart, you know, in a season like this, it's very important that we take care of our hearts. Importante na inaalagaan natin yung ating mga puso dahil napakadaling madurog ng ating mga puso, lalo na sa mga sitwasyong tulad nito. It's very easy for us to have broken hearts. Whether this was inflicted by other people or whether this was self-inflicted, it's easy for our hearts to be broken. 
And we also have to be very careful because if we are unaware, we might also break the hearts of other people. Napakadali po because we're very sensitive sa mga panahon na ito. Not only that, but we are also capable of breaking our hearts just the same. If we are not careful, that is why in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, it says, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Una, kailangan po nating alagaan yung ating mental health. Pangalawa, yung ating puso, the state of our mind, the state of our heart. And of course, we will be concentrating on this for today's message, our state of grace. And when we talk about the concept of grace, at least at the outset, let us define what grace is. Pag pinag-usapan po natin ang grace sa wikang Filipino, ito po ay biyaya. Kasi pag pinag-usapan natin ang mercy, ang Tagalog po nun ay awa. Ang grace po ay biyaya. And when we speak of grace, we should be appreciating God's unending and unmerited favor. Meaning when we talk about the favor of God, and when we talk about God's grace, ito po ay biyaya na hindi tayo karapat-dapat. How is our state of grace this morning? There was this movie back in the 1980s, an award-winning movie. Ang title po niya ay Babette's Feast. And in this movie, ito po ay storya ng isang congregation. Very secluded yung congregation ito. Maliit lamang sila. Who's very much rigid about their doctrines. At yung kanilang pagsasagawa ng kanilang mga buhay. To the point that in their idea of living the Christian life, they want everything in austerity. Gusto nila simple ang lahat. Pati ang pagkain nila dapat simple lang din. Palagi. But one day, there was this woman by the name of Babeth na lumayas po sa kanilang bansa because of the threat of war. Kumatok siya sa isang household Pagkatapos ang sabi niya, hayaan niyo po na ako ay magsilbing alipin ninyo sa bahay na ito. Nakiusap po siya at siya ay pinayagan naman. And so, she served as a servant of not just the family or the household that she is serving, but of the entire church. One day, ito pong si Babeth ay nanalo ng limpak-limpak na salapi. At pagkatapos po siya ay humingi ng permiso sa entire congregation na siya po ay magpapakain sa lahat ng mga tao at siya po ay magpapapiesta. Kaya po itong movie na ito ay tinawag na Babette's Feast. Pinag-isipan ni Babet yung mga pagkain na ibibigay niya at ihahain niya. Siya lang po mag rito at nagpaalam siya. Yun pong congregation, they were very careful as well. Sabi nila, ano ba tong gagawin ni Babet? Sige, pagbigyan na lang natin. Pero, when the feast came, hindi po sila masyadong nag-react kung gaano kasarap or kung gaano pinaghandaan ni Babet yung kanyang piyesta para sa kanila. And that's what happened. Sa lahat ng effort na ginawa ni Babet, nakalimutan po nilang ma-appreciate Ito. They did it out of duty. Na kumain doon sa piyesta na inihanda para po sa kanila. Pagkatapos po ng piyesta ng ito, si Babeth ay nagpahinga. And then, the household which she is serving found out na yung limpak-limpak na salapi na napanaluna ni Babeth ay inubos niya po doon sa piyesta ng yon. Lahat ng kanyang napanalunan ay inubos niya sa piyesta. Siguro po kung pupunta kayo sa Dads International, sa Vikings, baka inubos niya yung mga 100 na Vikings, lahat ng mga meals doon. Baka ganun ang itsura nun. Or more, kasi limpak-limpak na salapi. Eh. 
At least according to the story, inubos ni Babette yung kanyang pera. But then again, the church, because they wanted to live a very simple life, which is a very simple life, hindi nila na-appreciate yung ibinigay sa kanilang piyesta ni Babette. You know, this story is very much reflective of the story that we are about to study this morning. Because this is the story of what grace looks like. You know, the word grace, ang biyaya na salita, has been so much used, abused, and misused in so many different levels sa buhay natin. And when we talk about the concept of grace, kapag ito ay hindi natin masyadong naintindihan, this will keep us from fully understanding what the doctrine of grace is all about and what God's grace actually looks like. And surprisingly, since grace is free, we are very much familiar with it. And we are prone to not really fully understanding what it's all about. Kasi nga, libre siya. Kasi, biyaya siya ng Panginoon. Then there's the story of a son who abused the love and the grace and the sacrifices of his father because he thought that he deserved everything that he would have dahil siya po ay anak. Dahil karapatan niya na makuha ang lahat na meron ang kanyang ama. But you know that same grace when he realized and found out kung ano ang ibig sabihin nito, that is the same grace that made him come back to his father. And that is the same grace that made him realize what the unconditionality of his father's love is all about. Magandang umaga po. Sa umaga pong ito, pahintulutan niyo po ng ating mensahe ay mag-focus sa atin pong pag-aaral sa istorya at sa parable ng prodigal son and I entitled this message, The State of Grace. You know, the parable of the prodigal son is a very familiar one to all of us. Sometimes though, our familiarity with many parables and many biblical stories, this can give us a sense of taking things for granted. Kasi nga, palaging naibibigay. Kasi nga, palaging ginagawa. As the prodigal son experienced himself, nilustay niya ang lahat ng mana na meron siya sa kanyang ama. Because he thought that he deserved, he felt that he was entitled of whatever his father had. And he forgot the truth that this was because he was a son. And as a son, he was given the grace that his father could give him. This is the story of the prodigal son from Luke chapter 15, verse 20 to 24. Yun na lamang po yung babasahin ko dahil ho masyadong mahaba yung passage natin. Let me read from the English Standard Version from verse 20 po. Ito po ang nakasulat dito. And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran to him. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. This is the story of the prodigal son, returning back to his father after he lost everything, after splurging everything for himself and for his friends. 
Anong Tagalog ng splurging? Anong tawag doon? Naging bulagsak? Tama po yung word sa Tagalog. Eh? Bulagsak. ba diba pag meron tayong pera, minsan kapag hindi natin hinahandle ng maayos, nagiging bulagsak tayo sa pera. Winaldas. Thank you, Ate Rosel. <laughs> Buti na lang may translator ako dito. <laughs> Thank you, Te. Uh, bulagsak, winaldas yung lahat ng pera. Eh ngayon ang hirap-hirap pa naman maglabas ng pera. <laughs> Lalo na sa panahon ng pandemia. But this prodigal son, because he thought he deserved everything that he got from his father. He splurged everything. He spent everything for himself at para po sa kanyang mga kaibigan. But his father, upon his return, did not judge him. But instead, at least according to the story, the father ran to him, he embraced him, and he made a feast for him. You know, this is the story that perfectly exemplifies what God's grace is all about. In verse 24, and they began to celebrate. You know, this is a story of the misery of the prodigal son, which started with a decision. And his decision definitely was a wrong one. A wrong decision, a decision to live a life away from the grace of his father. Because he wanted to enjoy life. Diba kapag ikaw ay magulang, gusto ng mga anak mo nagpapaalam para mag-enjoy ng buhay sa labas. Sometimes. But that's the truth. Bilang anak, I think lahat naman tayo naging anak dito. May mga pagkakataon sa buhay na we tried to enjoy life. Na minsan wala tayong paalam minsan sa mga magulang natin. Basta gusto lang natin gawin. But the story of the prodigal son was different because he did not want to come back. Ang gusto niya, kuhanin lang lahat na meron siya dahil siya ay anak. Pagkatapos po, lahat ng ito ay kanyang nilustay winaldas. Naging, bulak, naging bulagsak po siya. He was disillusioned because when he lost everything, his friends, nawala po silang lahat. At siya po ay nag-asal na parang servant. Nawalan siya ng pag-asa sa kanyang buhay. He became desperate because he lost it all. Nawala po sa kanya ang lahat. He lived a very sinful life. And we know that at least according to the scriptures, when we talk about sin, it always leads to death. And when we speak of death, it doesn't have to technically say that we're only speaking about physical death. I love how one of my favorite preachers would put it, see Dr. Charles Stanley. When he said, when you talk about death in the scriptures, it's not just about physical death, but it could also mean the death of our peace. Kamatayan ng ating kapayapaan. The death to our joy. And also, the death to our security. That's what happened to the prodigal son. And you know, there are three main characters here. You have the prodigal son, the recipient of his father's grace. The father, who is the grace giver. And the eldest son or the first son who was the ungracious brother. Here's the story of the prodigal son and the three characters herein. And when we talk about the concept of our state of grace, bago natin malaman ka nung estado ng biyaya ng Panginoon sa buhay natin, it's very good for us to understand three things when we talk about the grace of God. And when we speak of God's grace, unang-una, what we have to understand is that God's grace does not depend on our faithfulness. Because if it does, then definitely, wala sa ating faithful. None of us could say that we have always been faithful to God and sometimes we struggle with being faithful even now. That's why when we talk about the grace of God, what we have to understand is that God's grace definitely does not depend on our faithfulness. It's good for us to see how the story of the prodigal son actually unfolded here. He arose after he realized 
na himasmasan siya sa kanyang buhay, he returned back to his father. And here in this story, in verse 20 and 21, kung kayo po ay parang mahilig mag-imagine kapag nagbabasa kayo ng mga books, di ba? Napaka, yung, you're trying to visualize what was taking place here. May kita niyo sa verse 20 and 21, ang sabi po rito, And he arose and come to his father, and came to his father. This is the prodigal son. But while he was still a long way off, ibig sabihin, hindi pa man nakikita ng sobrang lapit ng ama ang kanyang anak, he was still a long way off, his father saw him. Kung ikaw ay isang magulang, alam mo pati ang hilatsya ng anino ng anak mo. That's the reason why, at least in this story, it says, while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and he felt compassion and ran and embraced and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But you know what I loved about verse 20 here is yung while he was still a long way off. Malayo ka pa lang. Umiiyak ka pa lang. Alam na ng Panginoon na kailangan natin ng kanyang yakap. Alam na ng Panginoon na kailangan niya tayo. You know, hindi nabawasan yung pagmamahal ng ama kahit na nagkamali yung kanyang anak. In fact, he was very eager and excited when the son came back. You know, in Psalm chapter 51 verse 1, this is how God was described. He was a very compassionate father. Much like the father in the parable of the prodigal son. In Psalm 51 verse 1, it says here, But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and in faithfulness. In Psalm 103 verse 13, it says, The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Ang wikang Tagalog po, sa wikang Tagalog, when we talk about compassion, mahabagin ang ating Panginoon. And He is faithful. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, it says here, If we are faithless, kahit nawawala na ang ating pananampalataya, ang ating Panginoon ay mananatiling tapat sa atin. In the Weymouth New Testament version, it says here, And even if our faith fails, He remains true. Sa buhay po natin, mahirap maghanap ng mga totoong tao sa buhay natin. But at least, we can say that even if we are faithless, God will remain true sa atin. It is not only that God's grace is not dependent on our faithfulness, but also that God's grace delights in our humility. You know, it is not easy to acknowledge our mistakes, much less to verbalize our mistakes to other people. Iba po kasi yung inamin mo na nagkamali ka doon sa humarap ka sa ibang tao at sinabi mong nagkamali ako sa iyo, patawarin mo ako. No, it's easy minsan to say sorry to God. But to the people that we offended, it's very difficult. And we all struggle with it. But you know, in this story, you see the father embracing the son and delighting in the humility of his son. In verse 21, ang sabi po ng alibugang anak dito, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. 
Kung kayo po ay magulang sa kasalukuyan at meron kayong anak na lalapit sa inyo at sasabihin sa inyo, Mama, Papa, hindi na po ako karapat dapat na tawaging anak ninyo. How would you feel? You see the humility of the son in this situation. Because he has already made an introspection of his life. Nakita niya na kung anong klase ng buhay ang meron siya kung lalayo siya sa biyaya ng ating Panginoon. That's why when he ran back to his father, this is what he said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. That humility of the son delighted his father. And you know, God's grace delights in our humility. Though we struggle, you know, sometimes when you are able to verbalize your struggles, your mistakes to people, especially those whom you have offended or those whom you trust. It's mas masarap sa pakiramdam. Kasi sometimes it only needs a listening ear of the Father and those who are unconditionally loving you, for you to be able to be at peace with yourself and what we have done at least in life for the longest time. In James chapter 4, verse 6, but he gives us more grace. This is why it says, God opposes the proud, but give grace, gives grace to the humble. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 34 from the New Living Translation, it says here, The Lord mocks the mockers, but is gracious to the humble. You know, it's very difficult to be humble. Because sometimes we tend to look at ourselves as someone who's out better than other people. But when we look at the grace of God, there's nothing that we can be proud of ourselves. Except that we can boast in the love and grace of our Father. Not only is God's grace not dependent on our faithfulness, nor God's grace is delighting in our humility, but lastly, is that God's grace is very much unconditional. In verses 22 to 24, it says here, But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him, and put a a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to celebrate. You know, at least from the story, hindi dito binanggit na nung bumalik ang anak, ang sabi ng tatay, ah, ganun ba? O sige, Dahil nilustay mo pera mo, pagtrabahuhan mo lahat ng kakainin mo ngayon. Wala ka nang matatanggap sa akin. Nilustay mo na ang lahat eh. Hindi tinalikuran ng ama ang kanyang anak because what we have to understand that despite of all the sins and the mistakes of the son, the son remains a son to his father. Hindi nagbago ang estado ng anak sa mata ng kanyang ama. That's how unconditional God's grace is. That is what God's grace looks like. Kahit na sinabi ng anak, kahit po bilang isang servant na lang, tanggapin niyo po ako. But what did the father do? He asked for the best robe. He put a ring on his son's finger, he asked for the fattened calf to be killed. And they made a feast and celebrated. That's how unconditional our father is. You know, I'm not a father yet, but I am a fur father. And kapag gumigising po ako ng umaga, minsan nababad trip ako. Dahil ang amoy ng bahay ay amoy wiwi at amoy pupu. Subalit kahit na maraming wiwi at pupu sa paligid, dahil pinili kong maging fur parent, masaya pa rin ako sa kanila. 
how much more kayo po na mga magulang sa kasalukuyan. That even when your children makes bad decisions or commits mistakes or sin against you, you know how unconditional your love for your children is. And that should very much be reflective of the Father's grace sa buhay natin. Kung paano minamahal ng mga magulang ang kanilang mga anak. One of the books that changed my life aside from the scriptures is the book by Philip Yancey entitled, What's So Amazing About Grace? And here, he defined grace as this. You can see this on your screen. Sabi po dito, there is nothing I can do to make God love me more and nothing I can do to make God love me less. That is grace. That is God's grace. You know, the parable of the prodigal son is a story of a dead man coming back to life. A man who is lost but has found his way home. It is a story of grace. And grace in itself is a miracle. In fact, we say that grace has a name. And His name is Jesus. You know, this story of the parable of the prodigal son was spoken by Jesus Christ not to highlight actually the story of the prodigal son, but to highlight the attitude of the ungracious brother. Ito pong story ang ito ay ibinahagi ng Panginoon sa mga panahon na ang mga Pariseo at ang mga Saduceo was questioning him because he was entertaining the sinners around him. And sometimes we could be reflective of the Pharisees and the Sadducees when see sinners. Pag nakakakita tayo ng mga tao na alam natin na iniisip natin na mali ang nangyayari sa kanilang buhay. I'm not saying that we don't correct people for their sins, for their mistakes. But sometimes we forget to extend grace to people around us. And this is the same grace that was given us when we were lost. In that story, what's so amazing about grace, there was a beggar in that book. And this was a story retold by Philip Yancey. There was a beggar on his way. A man saw this beggar na nanlilimos. Ang tagal niya nang nakikita itong beggar na ito. And then, one day, dahil medyo hindi na siya natutuwa sa sitwasyon, sabi niya dun sa may beggar, why don't you go to the church? They might be able to help you. But you know what the beggar said? The church. I am already feeling bad about myself. The church will only make me feel worse. Para sa mga Kristiyanong katulad natin, masakit yun. When people around us would think that the church is not a place where they can be accepted, but they will be judged by people. We don't want to be judged and nobody among us here would like to be judged. That's why we received God's grace and this is the same grace that we should be extending to people. You know, we mirror the life of the prodigal son in a way or another. And we should not be feeling that we are entitled and we are better than others because all of us are on equal footing here. All of us are just recipient of God's unmerited, of God's unconditional grace. Let us show grace. Let us speak grace. And let us live in grace. How is your state of grace at the moment? I hope that we remember to be gracious people. That when we see people, we don't see their sins or their mistakes, that we see the love of God. How is your state of grace? I do hope that God's unmerited favor will keep you in His arms 
and will continue to fulfill the will for you and for us, His church. How is your state of grace? I will plead to the Father that He will bestow you all the love, the grace, the patience, and the favor that should be overflowing as He has promised from here on until He returns. Manalangin po tayo. Lord, maraming salamat po for showing us your favor. Unmerited as it is, we thank you, Lord, for saving us, for forgiving us, for showing us life again. We once were all prodigals, Lord. We have a lot of sins. Hindi namin pwedeng bilangin dahil lahat kami ay nagkasala. Subalit sa tuwing kami lilingo na titingin sa iyo, nagpapasalamat po kami dahil binigay mo sa amin na ang isang bagay na hindi kami karapat dapat. Salamat po sa biyayang ito. And as we ponder upon the state of grace in our lives, Lord, allow us to show grace just the same to other people. Help us, Lord, that when people see us, they will see your grace abounding in us. Our lives are our miracles because of you. Because your grace is a miracle in itself. Thank you, Lord. For this we pray, for Christ's sake. Amen.